All right, so Joe Biden remains to be completely complicit and endorsing the ongoing campaign of violence and the ethnic cleansing of the Palestinian people in Gaza and the West Bank and Palestinian uh, occupied territories. And so uh, Rashida Tlaib, who is one of the only members of Congress who is actually of Palestinian descent, um, confronted Joe Biden when he went to uh, Dearborn, Michigan to basically he test drove a, a electric uh, car that was being manufactured there as well as gave a speech. And Rashida Tlaib confronted him when he got off the tarmac directly about his explicit support for everything that Israel has been doing. Again, they've been committing widespread human rights abuses as well as war crimes throughout uh, this latest conflict that is called, even though it's just a one-sided slaughter. And um, here's what actually happened. Unfortunately, we don't have a video of this interaction, but we do have um, some accounts of what they actually said. So here from Common Dreams, they say, Representative Rashida Tlaib of Michigan, the first woman of Palestinian descent to serve in Congress, directly confronted President Joe Biden on Tuesday over his unwavering support for a far-right uh, Israeli government that continues to massacre civilians in the occupied Gaza Strip, in some cases using U.S.-made bombs and aircraft. Obviously, this comes on the heels of that report showing that Joe Biden is trying to push through a $700-plus billion weapon sale to Israel. Those weapons, again, as they just point out, will likely be used on Palestinian children. So it's absolutely grotesque. It needs to be blocked. And not only should we not be selling weapons to Israel, but we should be, um, we should be imposing sanctions on Israel. We should be cutting our funding to Israel as they're continuing these human rights abuses, but they continue on. When Biden arrived in Detroit for an event Tuesday, T Tlaib gr greeted the president on an airport tarmac and, according to an aide, expressed that Palestinian human rights are not a bargaining chip and must be protected, not negotiated. Continuing, the U.S. cannot continue to give the right-wing Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu government billions each year to commit crimes against Palestinians, Tlaib said during the brief exchange, which was captured only in photographs. Atrocities like bombing schools cannot be tolerated, much less conducted with U.S.-supplied weapons. The Michigan Democrat also told the president that the status quo is enabling more killing, that the current U.S. approach of unconditional support for Israeli government is not working, and that the White House must do far more to protect Palestinian lives, dignity, and human rights, uh, Tlaib's aide said. And it's not clear what he said in the moment in response to this, but this is basically what Joe Biden had to say um, after when he was giving his little speech in uh, Dearborn. And he basically addressed uh, Rashida Tlaib's comments directly, and here's what he had to say. And Rashid, Tlaib, where's Rashid? I tell you what, Rashid, I want to say to you that uh, I admire your intellect, I admire your passion, and I admire your concern for so many other people. And it's my, from my heart, I pray that your grandma and family are well. I promise you I'm going to do everything to see that they are on the West Bank. You're a fighter, and God, thank you for being a fighter. Right. So, you know, I mean, that's a nice fluffy statement on the outset, but what the fuck are you actually going to do about it? Because again, I mean, everything that he's done up until this point, he can say, oh, well, I'm going to do everything that I can in my power to protect your family. And he only mentioned the West Bank. He didn't mention Gaza, but um, I'm, I'm going to do everything that I can in my power to protect uh, the Palestinian people, specifically your family. And then, OK, but what are you actually doing about it? I mean, the United States has blocked the repeatedly blocked U.N. resolutions calling for a ceasefire. Biden has tepidly showed uh, support for a ceasefire, um, but hasn't been willing to uh, uh, inflict any pressure on the Israeli government to actually follow through on that. Um, and so his actions are not actually lining up with what he's saying here to Rashida Tlaib. So it's almost like a punch in the gut on top of this to do what Joe Biden is doing and explicitly supporting Israel uh, unconditionally and then turning around and saying something like this. I mean, listen, if he's going to completely change his approach to the situation, then that's one thing. But I have my doubts that he's going to actually follow through on that. So this statement kind of rings pretty hollow if you're not actually backing it up on the policy or the substance. All you need to do to pressure the Israeli government is threaten to cut off the billions of dollars in aid that we are giving them every single year. I mean, that is an extraordinary amount of leverage that Joe Biden has over the Israeli government, but he's obviously not willing uh, to go anywhere close to that. This also comes on the heels of this, and I don't have confirmation that it was 250,000 protesters, but clearly, at least according to this video, um, literally thousands and thousands of protesters showing up in, um, in Detroit to uh, protest uh, for Palestine as Joe 
Joe Biden was giving a speech here. So, you know, incredible show of solidarity. These protests have been going um, all across the country for uh, days now, almost a week now or over a week now. Um, all across in cities, I went to one that was here in Atlanta and there was thousands of people that showed up to, uh, to that one. So incredible shows of solidarity all around the entire United States um, coming out. And especially this is important with Joe Biden being in that area at the time. This also comes as Palestinians are staging a nationwide general strike. So this could be absolutely gigantic. One of the things, if you understand the dichotomy or the, the dynamic of the uh, situation across Gaza, Israel, the West Bank, is that it's sort of a different tiered system. So uh, Palestinians who may be living in Israel um, or Arabs that live in Israel may uh, have a different status than those who are treated in the, in the West Bank and those who are living in Gaza. They all have sort of different standards of living. And so it's hard to bridge that gap between them and, and Israel intentionally with their apartheid policies um, separates Palestinians in the West Bank. They, they cut them off off from each other. Uh, it's not a unified territory. And so because of a lot of these reasons and because of the apartheid policies of Israel, it's hard to get nationwide solidarity or it's hard to bridge that gap of solidarity um, in order to act as one collective group. But this is a perfect way to actually do that. So the nationwide general strike, this could be a significant point of leverage. And I honestly do believe that the tide is turning. We have mo multiple U.S. politicians, and this is basically unheard of, that are willing to publicly come out and not only advocate on behalf of human rights for Palestinians, but also directly directly condemn Israel for their human rights abuses and war crimes. Um, and in addition to that, we obviously have building momentum on multiple fronts uh, with a general strike going on in Palestine, as well as huge, massive protests across the United States. So maybe the tide is shifting. Um, you know, I have a feeling that this is just going to be one of those things that ends up dying down whenever Israel wants it to die down, once they obliterated enough civilian infrastructure that they're satisfied with, um, that then they will, you know, taper down the bombing campaign and uh, people will just kind of depressingly move on from this issue and it will be silent in the news um, as the ethnic cleansing inevitably continues and then a couple years down the road we'll have this spark of violence again. Um, so unfortunately, I mean, I still think that that's generally the route that we're going down here, but it's really good to see a lot of the global community coming together, standing in solidarity, politicians like Rashida Tlaib uh, willing to go and confront the most powerful man in the world on this issue. Uh, so hopefully the tide is turning. All solidarity to the people in uh, Palestine and the occupied territories that are uh, going on strike right now. Now, this is a really important issue, and we have to keep talking about it, keep bringing awareness to the situation, because Israel's actions are completely unjustified, they are completely uh, atrocious, and um, the human rights abuses and the war crimes have to stop immediately.